Hi friends, uh, so this is the continuance of the DDL trigger uh, article that was uh, for implementing a particular policy. In that uh, blog we had seen uh, how to implement a policy or, or, or with the help of a DDL trigger uh, to specify a naming convention for a stored procedure. Uh, so any procedure that would be created should have a, a USP underscore uh, as, as a prefix with the name. Uh, so that any developers uh, cannot make a mistake of implementing or, or having the wrong naming conventions uh, and also this this can be a, a naming convention uh, throughout the database for all the procs now here uh, we are going to see the second uh, important aspect of DDL triggers which is uh, for auditing so we would not uh, want first of all uh, in this uh, a trigger in this example or, or block we would be seeing that any alter or drop table uh, would not be allowed first and and, and uh, secondly when it is allowed uh, we uh, should be able to track down the the machine name from which uh, from where the query was executed uh, the program name uh, I mean the application the logging details the person who logged in to, to uh, execute uh, the command the start time the time when it was done and the, and also the session ID so these are the things that we are going to track of course I had, sh I had shown you in, in the last video how we can track out the actual query or the definition so that is also if you would like you can you can track down the, the definition of of uh, the query that was executed now uh, before uh, first of all we create an audit uh, table for all the drops and the uh, and the alters that will happen so let's create this table first and once this is uh, created this would be our audit table uh, we create this trigger so first of all we create a trigger uh, called table audits uh, this trigger uh, will be created on the database and for alter table and and the drop table uh, uh, events so when a person is trying to alter the table and the uh, and dropping the table we will be inserting uh, the audit uh, or, or the details uh, his host name uh, the program name the logging name uh, the start time uh, or the time when uh, when uh, the guy had actually executed the command his session id uh, and entirely these things will be tracked down uh, and inserted into our table and uh, so first we'll see uh, we will merely do this we are not going to uh, you know bar him but we are going to audit it uh, so we'll first see as how far uh, this is uh, effective and we'll try to create this trigger so let's create this trigger first now let's uh, try to alter a table so I have a table student I mean let, let me just you know uh, Let's uh, simply first see what we have, right? So we have a simple student table. We are just going to try uh, try to add a column with the name A of INT value, uh, and we'll see. Uh, currently, our audit table doesn't have anything, and we will try to right. We don't need this. My mistake. Right. So now we have altered this table with the help of trigger we will be able to track this down the time when this query was executed the session ID of the person who had executed it and uh, the logging name the program name and also the host machine from where this query was executed. Uh, so this is uh, an audit mechanism where we are not barring him from making the change but at the same time we are auditing it. Uh, let's try to make a simple change what we do is we alter this trigger and we we bar him now so let's put this in place what we are going to do is we are not going to allow him to drop or alter any table in our database a person can create but he should not be able to drop or alter anything in our database so currently this is it let me just drop this column A yes 
so you are not allowed to alter or drop any tables on this database that is the message that is that is flashed so i cannot drop this column that was uh, currently added now if i just try to uh, student it, it gives you the same message so I cannot drop this table also so we have seen both the things we are uh, here we are barring him from you know uh, applying any change and the second was uh, auditing where we were allowing him uh, allowing the person to uh, perform the activity but at the same time we are spying on him and creeping keeping a track of each of the details uh, that he's, he's, uh, he has executed at the time the session ID and, and all these details so this the, these are the two uh, demo videos where I have covered the two important aspects of of implementing a policy first uh, and also uh, having an audit mechanism in place for all the definition activities like uh, uh, dropping or having a particular naming convention for stored procs or altering or dropping tables so these are just examples for you uh, to help you understand uh, as, as a DBA the simple uh, activities which can be uh, a policy which can be implemented with the, with the help of triggers but remember uh, do have an audit mechanism or a policy only if it is very very necessary and, and, and intricate uh, for you to have because uh, triggers are costly because every operation that you do uh, I mean DML, uh, DDL activities will not be that uh, you know uh, highly uh, transactional oriented or at the same time will not be that uh, you know heavily performed on your production servers once in a while you would create a table or alter a table but yeah triggers DDL tri DML triggers are costly uh, because every insert or every update or delete that happens uh, also triggers uh, a particular set of uh, batches which is which is uh, you know defined in the trigger so be let's be careful we will we'll see the DML triggers in the next couple of sessions thank you friends